Yes, as you know, July is the standpoint anniversary month. 14 years of consistency. 14 years of giving a platform for women, a voice for the voiceless, championing the change of the narrative about the Ghanaian, the African woman. 14 years. It's been an amazing journey. And we say thank you to you for being a part of this journey. Anyway, today I have a program for you. In the end, what is this all about? So that the younger generation, those to come after us, will have it better than we ever had it. Today, we are going to find out the face or the kind of future female leadership that we expect in this country. And we are starting from the grassroots. Student leadership. Today, we celebrate three young, amazing student leaders who are doing well in their own area. We want to find out what they bring to the table. Or are they really the table? Are they going to be the table? It's going to be insightful. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be revealing and reassuring. I believe so. And um, you don't want to miss it. Let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. And then, of course, my dress is by Brie Ridra. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My makeup products by Notes Cosmetics and make a beautifully applied list. Let me clear the hair from my face so you see my face well. By makeup by Taiba. She is on Instagram. You can follow her. And her telephone number is on the screen as well. So you can call her any day, anywhere. And she'll come and sort your very beautiful, nice, you know, light on the face. One thing I like about her, she's fast. She doesn't waste time. Mm, fast and you're done, and you're good to go. i also like to say thank you to all those who have made the standpoint what it is today. We still need sponsorship. We still need you to come on board, and we hope and know that the benefit will be mutually beneficial. We take a break. When we come back, we meet three young female leadership. You'll be impressed. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to the standpoint. Yes, as I told you earlier on, July is anniversary month of the standpoint, and this year the standpoint is marking 14 good years consistently, week after week, since the 11th of July 2008. We've been on air every week. Every single week. I mean, it's my moment of pride. And I'm allowed to really feel proud about it. And of course, it's you. And you, and you, and you, and you. You have helped us make this. Of course, God is the ultimate reason. But without you, we couldn't have come this far. And today, I'm just going to find out. Have we made an impact? Not, just, not necessarily directly. But the young leaders, female leaders we have in this country, what awaits us in future? What are they going to bring to the positions of authority? I'm so proud of the kind of leadership we have across in this country. Anyway, it's not my show. It's their show. So welcome. Let me say thank you to all our supporters. The uh, Puma Drinks. And um, our way purified mineral water by Casa Preco Company Limited. Go, go to your gut. Thank you so much. House of Food, Antivera and the team, we are so, so grateful. Kodam Gift and Stationery, everything gift and stationery, you'll get it from them. And of course, yep, cleaning services, they take care of our environment. And uh, of course, um, Standing Flora and Deco, they give us the beautiful plants, both 
natural and artificial. And Phoenix Deco, Phoenix Deco, you can get them on Instagram and then on Facebook as well. We're so, so grateful to all of them. But on my set, I have three young ladies who are leaders in their own right. They are all my daughters, but one of them, uh, if I decide to tell her story, will not finish today. Seated across me is the one that I officially adopted as my daughter, not legally, but she's my daughter. And I'm so proud of her. She is am to Ikunfi Ameya, USAC Women's Commissioner. I mean, she's my daughter through and through. Thank and I'm proud of her. Welcome you. to the standpoint. Thank you for having me. Interesting. This is the first time you're actually sitting on set. Yes. Every time you are there. Yes. Please go back there. No. <laughs> <laughs> How to, what is USAC? Um, so USAG is University Students Association of Ghana. We are the biggest block under National Union of Ghanaian Students because we represent all the universities, both in public and private. Mm. And we have more than 30 ratified members. But in theory, every single um, university is a member of USAG. So that's literally it's about USAG. And we have our Congress um, coming up very shortly. So. Okay. And you're going to contest again? No, I'm just handing over. You're just handing over? Yes, please. Okay, so you're on at the right time. Um, well done. And next to her, I have Zoe um, Lois. Poku, final year, mechanical engineering president, UENR, Forensic Society, African Public Speaking. There should have been a comma somewhere, Meboa. Yes, Please introduce yourself, but you know the mechanical. You know how I stress the mechanical engineering president. Please tell me about you. So my name is Zoe Lois Fuku. Mm. Um, I'm the past woman in engineering vice president. I mm. offer mechanical engineering. I'm in my final year. Okay. And I'm the president of the UNEF Forensic Society. That is the debate and public speaking club of the University of Energy and Natural Resources. Wait, so, now engineers so, so, so debate public speaking so if I'm over. So um, it's it's funny because a lot of um, members of the of the society are actually engineering students. Wow. Yes. And you are the president. Yes. Okay, we'll get back to that. <laughs> and next to me, let me go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is the lawyer in the making. Mm. Somebody promised me she was going to be a lawyer, so she'll fight to defend me. I'm still holding on to that. Gloria Kranchua Nyakon, Justice of the Judicial Board of the Students' Representative Council, right? Mm. Okay, University of Ghana. Okay, tell me, what's it uh, when you say Justice of the Judicial Board? Like, Thank you very much. Chief Justice in the making or something like that. <laughs> so... Thank you very much for the opportunity mm. to at least talk about students' leadership in terms of women. So mm. my name is Gloria Kranchoanya. As you rightly said, I am a final year law student at University of Ghana School of Law. Mm. And it's quite interesting that I find myself in the leadership space in every um, place that I go. So in my hall, mm. I am the chief justice. So it's by dint of that that I am a justice of the... Uh, judicial Board of the SRC. So the Judicial Board consists of... Your so whole, you are the... What? Chief Justice. Chief Justice. Yes. What does it mean? That's um, Jean Nelson Nakaho. So mm. the Chief Justice is basically the head of the judicial arm, mm. just as we have the National Chief Justice. Okay. So yes, I am the... The Chief Justice, I see to the adjudication of matters, mostly it's during elections that you have a lot of cases to preside on. So that is basically what it is about to become a Chief Justice. So I started as a, a, a member when I was in my third year, and then now I am the Chief Justice. So I am <laughs> a member of the Judicial Board there, and then 
I'm to mention the USAG. I am okay. a legal advisor for USAG. And also in the law school, I find myself to be the publicity committee head. Okay, so. now I'm afraid. <laughs> you haven't even completed school. You're already legal, 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 legal everywhere. You know, legal advisor, uh, chief justice. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations to all of you. And I, I'm sure we have some student leaders in the audience as well. I'll get the opportunity to get them to introduce themselves. But what made you take up this position? Um, so I've been doing leadership myself since in like secondary school. Um, currently, the reason why I believe I contested to become USA Gomez Commissioner was because I felt that the position was underutilized. Um, including the women that occupied it, always mm. thought the position was just about attending events and sharing food. And I felt it was very, 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 should I say, undermining mm. to feel that I am occupying a position because I want to share food. And I'm speaking of all universities, which means from north to south. Mm. You spend as much money as the president spends to go around and speak to delegates. And it's because you want to share food. I just didn't get it. And I mean, it wasn't like the basic, um, it's, it's not even stated as a function in the constitution for the women's commissioner. So the reason why I ran was because I wanted to make a change. I wanted to prove a point that there was a lot to the USA Women's Commission position mm -hmm. than just sharing food. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying it, all of them know, when there's an event, I will give you food because I want to give you food. Right. It's not my duty to give you food. Exactly. I am a nice person, I'm a kind person. So I will give you the food to eat. But I wouldn't want you to think that because I am USA Women's Commissioner, so I am giving you food. So that's basically for why I ran for USA Women's Commissioner. Rebel. But, <laughs> but no, it's I, in the blood. It's okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> My previous history with leadership, as you may rightly know, I've had a lot of issues with my mm -hmm. family members because they always thought if you're a smart girl, you have to be doing some specific things. Mm -hmm. They didn't think that was the way to go mm -hmm. and all of that. So. I think I've been doing leadership because I've, I've been very rebellious. I just always wanted to be able to change the perception in people's mind of right. some specific things. Mm -hmm. And not to blow my own horn, I think I'm very proud of myself and the mm -hmm. kind of things that I've been able to achieve. Right. But, uh, I'm to hold on, let me come, just be, I will come to you about your, you know, why you decided to contest. But this issue of, you know, women get into positions of authority and not really utilizing it as they should. What's your view on that? Um, I think it's because of the perception that the... But is this something you've noticed? Oh, yes, I have. Okay. Um, so um, the first position I had that made me realize that was when I was Women in Engineering Vice President. Mm. Before that, we tried to look at... Um, possible programs that that particular position had had and there was none. So that position was decorative because mm. naturally a lot of engineering students are males. Mm. If you pick 10 engineering students in my school, nine of them are males. And so when they were creating the body under GHI, that's the Ghana Institute of Engineering, engineering. they thought to create an avenue where if anybody is pointing to say, oh, well, GHI is not really helping, they would say, oh, but we have women in engineering. Mm. And, and that is something there. Mm -hmm. But considering that there is no blueprint, there was no blueprint for us, you recognize that people were just filling the space so that it looks good mm. on paper that there's women in engineering on there. So we had to do a lot of work because we didn't have anything to look back on. That's mm. what made me realize that, okay. So there's really something like that. Um, I think that both genders are culpable. I think that um, men are in the particular space I found myself because they would actively sideline these people because they think that they are not going to contribute anything. On the other hand, too, I feel like the women were not pushing enough. So they are just, okay, yes, I am represented. Hi, I'm a woman engineering president. And then they sit and then they do what ideally mm. they are confounded to do, like mm. sharing food. food. Yes, but um, 
it was different because we actually had to press on. So you get a lot of things like you are troublesome, mm -hmm. a lot of things like why are you making too much noise? You don't respect. Like, this is not something you should argue about. You are too no. You are too no. Or, or pray. Pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and you, you have to make it known that, no, it's not because I'm a loud mouth. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what you are doing. And it's actually wrong. Like, give me a chance. We mm -hmm. had to fight for fans at a particular point yeah. in time because none of the women engineering, like, bodies have ever fought for fans. Like, what do you want their money for? So we mm -hmm. had to prove a point. Well, I think they deserve an applause. Mm -hmm. Let me take a break. Oh, can we come back? We'll look at your journeys, the two of your journeys to where you are today, why you decide. I mean, you've touched on it, but we're going to look at your journey there and what you really want to achieve by the time you're leaving office. What would you want to be remembered for? Well, you're watching The Standpoint. Again, I say thank you to GTP for my cloth, my dresses by Brie Redua. Thank you so much to them. Of course, makeup products, not cosmetics, all the shades, all the colors, and beautifully applied by Makeup by Teba. And, of course, my panelist makeup by um, Kairos Studio and as for Madam, mm -hmm. she did her own makeup. Why is it in the car? She did her own makeup because she's a makeup artist as well. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to the standpoint. Now, let me come to you, Lois. How has your journey been? Your journey it's, to leadership? It's not been easy. I think it's a cliche thing to say, but it's really not been easy. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a cliche, it's a fact. Yeah. Um, so I started in secondary school, but the pressure and the, dis the distinguishing factor that, oh, you are female in politics, actually hits me in university. Mm. Um, in second year, I ran for... Um, a re-election for financial secretary and it wasn't good. I, I had my, my mental health in the gutters a bit because I didn't anticipate, it, it had never crossed my mind that people would actively decide not to vote for you because you are female. Like it never crossed my mind. I always thought you need to show like, okay, you're capable. Okay, so what have you done before? Can you do it? You pass vetting excellently. You are good in your campaign trail. But no, it was also because you are female. Why do I have to vote for a female when a man is there? It was, it was a, like a light bulb. Even moment. at the tertiary level. Yes. Um, so we had the, the re-election, um, and then I won. But it was taken to court, the school court, and um, they won the case, opposition won the case. So we had to form a financial committee as per the constitution states, and I was a member of the financial committee for a while. Yeah, so that was my first loss. And the second thing I ran for, and when I was running again, the thing that was like, ah, why are you running again? Like, didn't you get the memo the first time? Then they'll look at you and say, ah, but you already ran for something first. Like, don't you want to chill? Like, a lot of, mm -hmm. like, comments like that. But I ran for women in engineering, vice president, and I was able to get it. And the reason why I started to run for these things is because I am a big believer in making the world a better place. Mm. But as I've grown up, I've realized that it's a huge task. And so you need to start from somewhere. So the first question I ask myself is, okay, I find myself here in the engineering department. How can I make a difference? I know that I have a passion. I have a love for cars and automobile stuff. But how can I make an impact? Then I realized, okay, women in engineering is something that I could actively do. In my class, it's 109, and there are just five girls. Whoa. Yes. And there have been a series of girls dropping out, especially in my department. So it could start with 12 girls, and then in final year, it's just one person. In final year, it's just three people. So I realized that, okay, that was something I could actively um, help with. So women in engineering, I went, and then I was able to 
get the ports. Okay. Yeah. So what do you do? To, is it do you run a, a what mentorship program for them? Are you able to convince them and encourage them to stay or find out why they drop out? Um, so in first year, what we do is that we create some sort of um, niche mm -hmm. for them so that they feel like they belong, but mm -hmm. also so that they know that, okay, I can get to final year because Zoe is in final year mechanical engineering. So then there's that. So they know that, okay, if I need any help, I can reach out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes to, um, in their first year, they're overwhelmed by the courses. Right. So then if they know that, okay, you did engineering math, how was it? Can you teach me? Then they're able to do it because in first year, it was hard to get someone to um, explain certain courses to me because the idea was uh, by second year, you obviously drop out. Like, why are you stressing me to help you out? But then if they're able to get that particular um, comfort or support mm -hmm. system, that helps them with those particular so courses. So you decided to be the support you didn't get? Yes, please. Great. Yes, and I had um, um, a very supportive um, body yeah. under the Women in Engineering, so we were able to do so that. So you get this idea of opening door yes. for others, for too, others and too, and holding it you know, open for others too. Yes. Awesome. Glad that wow. we were able to do something. I like the smile on your face. You really did work well. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, Karanjoa, your position is not really spe gender specific. Mm -hmm. You are in a position that could be occupied by male or female. How has it been? The journey. Well, I like the smile before. <laughs> the... <laughs> well, because it's, it's been amazing. Actually, me being in leadership did not start in the university. Yeah. Right from basic school, I've occupied positions from class six, JHS three, SHS, and then to to this place. And I think that for me, I always love to join in helping something, not necessarily being in a position. So when I am starting, I I make sure that I find the the governing body, and then if there's anything that I could help, oh let's do this because I don't necessarily have to be the the president before I can help you do something. So I think that was what gave me the exposure and I was able to meet some people. I was able to learn how to do some things. And then when I came to the university, actually I wanted to be a chief justice because I realized that a lot of people to come to the courts after elections mostly. And then I, I just loved it because I love the law too. So. I started with clerk duties. I used to go to the, the courtroom. I was a clerk when I was in level 100, level 200. No, the, the, the court you're talking about, student court. Student court, okay. I mean, yes, okay. please, yes. Mm -hmm. So, but we, we, we act as though we, it's the exactly. actual court. Yeah. Yes, so I was a clerk. And then in my second year, I was moved from the judiciary because I, w I became the general secretary for my whole but that was also a good experience because my vice president, our vice president was also a female. So at least we had a shared idea and it wasn't just me being a female and then sidelined. At least I had someone that I could share what I think, even when the boys have left or are talking. Yes. So I go back to the judicial board. And then now I am a chief justice, even though most of the halls have male chief justices. It's just a few that have female mm -hmm. chief justice. Yes. And I think it's it's been an amazing one. I love it. Mm. I love to do But to how, do how do people perceive your colleagues? How do they see you? Especially when you have to sit on cases and um, what's the word? Adjudicate. 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 Matters. Matters. Yes. So <laughs> they see you as um, sometimes they feel like, okay, it's because your hall, you don't have a male. So that is why you are occupying the, the, the position. So it's not really because you are the only one that can do it. But clearly in my hall, we have males there. And then based on my capabilities or based on what they have seen that I have done in the hall, I was appointed the, mm. the chief, chief justice. justice and then... Feather, I am. So yours is by appointment, yes. not election. Chief, no. So okay. just like the national level, the president appoints the, okay. the chief justice. Okay. Yes. 
and it's it's been it's been a good one especially when we we all come together as um a jury mm. so you find out that you are the only girl or they are just two girls mm. and you have to rack your brains and make sure that you you give a sound decision with a good reasoning mm. to know that at least it's not because you are a male that is why a, a female that's why you are there but because you're actually you capable of takes. exactly mm. because you're actually capable of doing or because you you know the law and you know what you want mm. and what has to be done so I get the impression that all of you in your position you are determined to portray and show that you are there because you deserve to be there and you've got what it takes, yes. but not because you're a woman. Yes. 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 Right. Am I right? That is right. Lois, am I right? Yes, you are right. <laughs> okay. Let me go to the audience and get them to introduce themselves. Thank you. My name is Pearl Kaitogo, a Press and Information Committee member for USAG a deputy entertainment committee head for my home in Sasabaho, and a general assembly representative for my home to the SRC. Excellent. I'm Salamat Chato Ibrahim. I'm the United Nations Student Association UCC vice president. I'm the deputy clerk of parliament, and I am the SATSA ladies, the SATSA is the computer science and IT student station of UCC ladies committee chairperson. Okay. And I'm okay. the deputy women's commissioner for TAIN UCC. Yes. UCC. Yes. Great. So you are in the politics. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Gifty Echampo, immediate past local NUX treasurer, Amstead, Kumasi campus, mm -hmm. and also immediate past member of the finance committee of the National Union of Ghana students. Great. Thank you very much, Auntie. Uh, my name is Angela Asantawa Amuako. Um, um, USA, USAC um, aspirant, specifically going for the Office of International and Diaspora Relations Secretary. Okay. I'm the current Deputy Women's Commissioner, UGR South Okay. Also, immediate past Vice President of my department, that's the History Department of the University of Ghana. Oh, wow. Yeah, thank you very much. Well done. My name is Etonama Priku. I'm the fo I was the formal General Secretary for CREDEC and also a member of the NCC, and then I also look forward to become, you know, to take up positions um, in Ghana, like great positions, yes. Awesome. <laughs> My name is Irabna Sariansa, and I'm the Vice President for the Business House Junior Komo Room, which is under the Business, University of Ghana Business School. Also, I'm the Auditor-in-Chief for Dr. Hilary Manho in University of Ghana. Thank you. Okay. My name is Abiola Wamasha, former SRC Vice President for UDS Tamale Campus. Okay. I'm currently doing my national service and, and I'm active member of the UDS Upper East Students Union and virtually a mentor and an activist for them. Thank you. All right. I'm Catherine Awajaba Taylor. I'm a member of the scholarship committee and for me, I hold no positions as my fellow colleagues have said, but mm. I'm yet to make a name for myself. Okay. Yeah. I'm Ellen Tachibo Nsio, a final year student at the University of Education, Winneba, and the immediate past president for the only female hall, which is Kedjua Griho at Winneba. Currently, I'm aspiring for the USA Women's Commissioner. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I am Angela Akusika Tagwija, an aspirant for USAC Press and Information Secretary and currently the Women's Commissioner for UG Pusa. Thank you. I'm Iris Mensa, currently the Methodist University Women's Commissioner. Okay. I'm Benis Mensa, the former um, Women's Commissioner for Methodist University, Dansman Campus, and I'm also a member of the I'm a, I'm a committee member for um, NUCS, that's the uh, Secretary for Women's Development. Okay. Hello. My name is Love Mark, the Vice President for British, British Parliamentary Debate in Central University. Okay. Thank you. Mm, see, you are excited already. <laughs> you love to see debaters, okay. Hi, my name is Ama Odamia Mwaku. I studied the Bachelor of Pharmacy as a first degree. I'm at Mount Grace University studying law. I'm currently an ambassador to Ghana for Federation of International Agenda and Human Rights. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. You, you did pharmacy, now yes. you are doing law? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm Queen Bernard Rabri Davis, the former Women's Commissioner for the University of Health and Allied Sciences, Hawaii Campus. I'm currently the Project Director for Road Track to UHAS. Thank you. Hi. I'm Abigail Asantua Opoku. I'm a Justice for the University of Ghana, um, SRC. I'm the Chief Justice in my whole Elizabeth Francis C. Hall. I'm also a, a justice at the University of Ghana Law School Judicial Board and a member of the Publicity Heads Committee. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so you see, I have powerful women in the studio, powerful young women in the studio. Amazing. Well done to all of you. Very proud of you. And um, We'll, we'll come to some of the things that were thrown at you, how you've managed to survive it, and what is next. Let me take a break and we say thank you once again to our supporters. That's Puma Drinks and Awake Purify Mineral Water by Casa Preco Company Limited, Gogot Yogurt, Juice Time, 100% Fruit Juices, House of Food and the Variant Team. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stunning Floral Deco. Um, they give us the plants, both natural and artificial. Thank you to Kodam's Gift and Stationery. Thank you to EK's Ghana. We are grateful. Yep, cleaning services. Everything cleaning, they take care of it. We take a break when we come back. What is next? What does the future of female leadership in Ghana look like from their perspective? We'll be back. Welcome back to the standpoint. You know, one of the things that really um, keep women away from taking positions of authority, taking up challenges, is the things that are thrown at us. The name calling, the insults, the lies, the rumors, the, 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 the traps set for you. Have you encountered any of these and how have you been able to overcome them? Karanjua. Myself, in the university, I don't think I have encountered such a major challenge. But I think sometimes it's about myself because I enter a room or I realize that it's male-dominated. So sometimes, honestly, I feel a little intimidated. And I think, I can't do it. Let me just leave. But most of the times I challenge myself to say, oh, you can do it. Because even in the, the, the judicial board, right, nationally, mostly the judges are males. Mm. It is just, it's now that you're, we're getting um, female judges and then even in our schools as well. So it is one of the things that challenged me to, to go for it regardless because if someone has been able to do it mm. then it means that I will be able to do it and I am very happy to see that we are gradually breaking the traditional ceiling that was uh, that was covering the leadership the leadership platform to make it look like oh it's just for males you the females are just to be subordinates so you have to settle for being vice president or secretary, you can be president, or you just have to sit there and watch them. Mm. So I think I have not encountered a major challenge as someone plotting and get yes. yes okay. But, but how far do you want to go with this leadership? I, I I would want to take up leadership positions wherever I go to. And even if I don't have it, I would I would want to help in my little way, mm. however I can. Mm. Because I think that it will still make an impact. And however little I start, I think that as I go, I'll be um, recognized and then fit wherever I am. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Lois. Yes. Um, when I was running for financial secretary um, for SRC, um, there were a lot of name calling. There were some write-ups that would say things like, oh, um, I've had four abortions. There were other write-ups right. that would say, that um, I'm not fit to, to handle finances. There were some that would talk about my age, talk about my level. But um, in all, all of this... No, there was nothing about you being a prostitute. 
Oh, there was. Yeah, mm -hmm. that time. Um, yeah, that I was, was sleeping with. One. Oh, yes, yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there was. Oh, there was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in all of that, I think that I needed to understand why they were doing that, so that I lose focus, so that I step down. Um, when I was running for women in engineering, there was a similar thing, but that was coming from the same gender. So that was quite hurtful as opposed to the first one. When I was running for president for the Union Foreign Society, that's my current portfolio, I had a similar thing. But in all of these things, um, I kept on asking myself, why, why are they doing this? So that I lose focus, okay, so then that's the more focus. Like that's when I get focused the more. That's when I look at my plans, my schedules, I become more resilient because that's the only way to get back at them and not to respond to them because you can't respond to every single thing. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. So I always ask myself, okay, why is this person saying this? Why is this person doing this? Then I can be able to get back at them or be able to achieve whatever it is I want to achieve. The reason why mm -hmm. there's that backlash coming. Mm -hmm. um, when your time comes, what do you hope? to achieve in the next five, 10 years when you ladies have left the student field, come to the workplace and be vying for positions of authority. How, what, what, what kind of picture, national picture, would you want to see? The first thing is that people's cognitives are not on the defense when a woman wants to vie. I want to be able to stand for an election or a position. And the first question is, are you capable and not why why are you vying for it because you are a woman mm. because i think that um it, or how are you going to cope how as are a you woman? going to cope as a woman or questions like you're supposed to be at home how mm. are you going to cope with mm. cooking are you taking married? care of your kids what does your <laughs> husband think, think about, about this <laughs> yes <laughs> I, I i hope that that is not the question and the question is how I'm able to make an impact with a particular portfolio mm. that I want to vie for. That should mm. be the question. And at the same time, so I hope that um, when given the position, um, you speed up the whole, because I think that it's a, it's a long struggle. I don't think that it's going to end. I, however, I think that progress should be seen every year, at every mm. point in time. I don't think that we are magically going to get the level, no. I don't think we are going to get the same. It will take time. Yes, it will take time. But at the same time, so I hope that to everybody who is being able to break that glass ceiling, they are able to give opportunities or springboards for other people to also be able to get to where they awesome. have. Awesome, I'm too. So, I, was, I don't know if I should answer all the questions. Hmm. So I, I ran for, a, should I say, a predominantly female position. So um, I didn't have too much of and name calling and stuff like that because it was a female position. And also because I ran on the post. Because I believe that if I had run with other people, I would have faced that because a lot of the time the managers are male. So they will still engineer the same propaganda they would have engineered against you if you were running for as it were president or secretary. So I didn't face that too much in this time. But what I faced was certain people making sexual demands, expecting sexual favors. Mm -hmm. And um, from what I hear from some of the complaints I receive and things like that, you have people saying that, oh, this person is doing it, so if you don't want to do it. And unfortunately, I, I, I want to say it's from both of us. Mm -hmm. Like the male managers are making us feel you have to do it. Then within us, we are also saying that, oh, if I don't do it, I won't be able to. Or we believe that indeed it's the person same did it. Right. You know, you won't take right. your time to find exactly. out if indeed the person did it or not. Yes. So um, some of the people here might have heard me say before that I do not have an issue what you want to do with your personal life. You mean but, your sexual life? Exactly. Yeah. But I wouldn't want I I wouldn't want you to assume that having sex with this particular person is the reason why you are winning the election. You will feel the person is nice. Mm. You want to go and sleep with the person. Okay, it's you and the person. If you agree, you go and enjoy yourself and go home. Now I'm a sexual and productive health educator, so I'm a little open about these things. My family members cannot beat me again. <laughs> so. You can do that and that's it, but don't do it because you feel you have to do it to attain something. something. If 
I won't say if you want to do it. Don't don't agree to it. If it's enjoyment, yeah, understanding that it's enjoyment, go. But if you are doing it because you feel that you are going to do it and you win the position, unfortunately, a lot of them don't win. The people that win, they continue to become subordinates of the people forever because they'll come back and they'll be asking you to give them deals and cuts in whatever and whatever. I think another problem that we also have currently is some of the women are not um, supportive enough. Um, they start to see us as competition and things like that. But a lot of really? them... Yes. It's a lot, a lot of them are encouraging. You know, these, all the women in position. Yes, see they feel you. they feel that. Um, sometimes it's not even older you know, women. But if they go home, they are going to take my sign. Go home. <laughs> no, it's not even it's, in I mean, politics. Yes, so. it's sometimes it's even in the engineering leadership. space, engineering space where you are going to intern, there's a lot of antagonism. It's it's, it's, it's wow. Tough. So, so they, that's why we are really appreciating yes, people like you. Exactly. Letting people other people exactly. so yeah. for so me in, in really as much as I like to do a lot of things by myself, I try to take I try to take people along. Just that I don't take everyone along because I feel that I've been through a lot as an individual. People have made sacrifices for me. So I won't let somebody who is not ready to make a sacrifice for another person go on that journey. I'm so sorry, unfortunately. It makes sense. It makes sense. In as much as I'm trying to create opportunity and make people um, enjoy some of the things I enjoy as well, I want somebody that is ready to notice that I'm also supposed to sacrifice for someone else, just like the way somebody sacrificed for me. You. So if you're ready to do all of that, you're ready to be dedicated, then that's fine. You're welcome to come on my journey. So I, I think I've answered all the three questions. You have. So and unfortunately, um, my time is up. So in conclusion, 30 seconds. What's your final word? So I think that if we want to uh, ensure gender parity, right, we have to make sure that we tolerate diverse perspective of everyone's view. So not just about men, not just about women. Now women are striving, women are doing very well in all spaces, architecture, education, finance, even in law. So I think that we should try as much as possible to do it more. Just as Amtu, Amtu was saying, when we get to the position, we shouldn't just sit on it and think that, oh, if someone comes, the person is going to take my shine. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we take people along our journey so that even when we leave our position, we know that there's someone who is going to take care of the people, people that are coming and not just us. And then when the fate of a male is coming to take and all that. So we have to make sure that we encourage people to, if we find ourselves in leadership positions, we should make ourselves mentors in as much as we are mentees to other people we mm -hmm. should make ourselves available for people to also approach okay. us how did you do this how should i go about this because there are some people that would want to take up some positions but of course they don't know how to do it so let's Hi. do that thank you lois um, i'd like to say that female success is strength that means that your success is also dependent on the possibility of someone else being successful and so you cannot derail it you you need to keep on thriving to ensure that other people can be able to do that and that is the most f like fulfilled thing to do to understand that your acts have been able to impact not only yourself but someone else and on a larger scale generations to come you know you 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 would <laughs> you have made me very emotional you know about because i'm a strong believer of being deliberate about certain things yeah. you know sometimes things are thrown at me and I don't react. I don't, especially social media, people coming, I don't say anything. Just because I want to prove to some young person looking at me that you can survive this. Yeah. I can go also dirty myself. And sometimes I'm fighting within me that man, just the me give the auntie, me a fear. But then you have to just imagine if you all see me social media, always fighting, mm -hmm. throwing things, you know, how would you, then the perception is that, Salidam, you have to find, fight throughout. Mm -hmm. You know, you always have to descend to the gutters. You always have to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's hard being deliberate about and being intentional about maintaining a standard and proving a point to people looking up to you. It's not easy. So thank you. Thank you for you ladies making that comment. For people like me, 
it just tells me that it's worth the sacrifice. Mm. It is worth the sacrifice because it ain't easy, girl. <laughs> it ain't easy. Yes, I'm to your final no, word. I just like to say thank you very much for the opportunity once mm. again. I mean, I think I don't publicly say it enough. Thank you for giving me an opportunity as an individual. Thank you for being there through my journey. Mm. And thank you for making me know that it's very important to impact not just yourself but someone else. Um, I, I believe that I noticed this very much from when I did Girls in ICT, even though I have no knowledge mm. in science. I don't like math, <laughs> but I was able to do that successfully. Yeah. Um, I'm able to mentor some people directly, not direct, um, indirectly Very as well. Um, so I'm, I'm just grateful for being, having you as like a godmother and also the people that look up to you, we are very, very, very grateful. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching, make me cry. Thank you want to make me cry. And thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for, um, I've learned a lot, you know, and um, sometimes you think you're doing everything right, but you need to, that's why I did this program, you need to go back to see how the younger ones are doing. We all seem to be fighting and being strong and all that. But some of the things that I'm hearing today, you know, the, the, the antagonistic nature of sometimes when you want to achieve and you want to go to somebody and, you know, the fear of somebody thinking you will take their shine and be, I mean, some of these things are like, okay, yeah, you know. Okay. I can't believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. If my time, I'm 52 years, I left school, how many, 30 something years ago, you know? You and their voice. <laughs> and your husbands. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just uh, interesting that it's still happening. But hey, I just want you to all to know that I'm proud of you. Thank you. You know, you don't give up, if nothing at all. Some of us, you know our stories. And the fact that, and I take pride in the fact that this program has been on, been consistent. And I speak consistency, I keep saying, because it hasn't been easy. And some of you know the things that have been thrown at me, the program and everything. But we keep going one step after the other. And you were making the impact. You will make the impact. So I know you are strong, all of you. But it's okay to break down sometimes. But what is not, good, is not okay is to... Let it get to you and destroy you. You breaking down means you're a human being. Right. But what makes you more human and being a woman is by rising up again and taking the steps to moving on. So me, I'm afraid of. <laughs> I'm afraid of you. The next five years is going to be, may God give us a life to Amen. see. To see what, how you girls are going to shake the Amen. nation. With force. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, unfortunately, sometimes when we go through it and we get the position, we forget. We think that I've struggled to get here, so let me protect him. But no, let it guide you to know that just as it was done to me, I must not do it to other, to people. other people. Let me pass on the good, but the bad, the ugly, let me be the one for people to say that she was different. They were different. This generation is amazing. Anyway, I'm on TikTok. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank, Thank you for you sharing. For and Thank I look you. forward to having you again every now and then. We shall have more conversations like this. And you are representing all student leaders across the country. And I'm sure you'll make them proud. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be back with a bit of me. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, the future is female. I beg to differ. I say that now is female. Because what we do now as women is what is going to inform and pave the way for those coming after us to dare to break the records that we set. So it is important as female leaders or women in position of authority, irrespective of where you find, as a mother, as a teacher, as a, as a lawyer, whatever it is where you have people looking up to you or working with or under you, 
it is important we think beyond our own comfort and discomfort and make that deliberate effort intentional to make sure that the younger ones coming will have it a bit easier than we did. No great leader, no great leader achieves without making sacrifices. We have to make sacrifices. We keep making sacrifices. It's not easy, but it is important we make it. You know, as a Christian, I was just thinking about this some few weeks ago. When Jesus was on the cross, and people use this against us Christians, that if, and indeed, it happened, yeah, one of the thieves on the cross said, if you are the savior, why can't you save yourself and save so you can save us? The truth of the matter is that Jesus could have saved himself. He could have, but he didn't because that would have defeated the purpose. If he saved himself, that means he wouldn't have died for us. Sometimes as leaders of today, female, we need to die so we can help the younger ones coming. Leadership is a chain. Female leadership is a chain. You always have to look back to see how those coming after you are faring. What are the challenges? Look ahead to see who is ahead of you, how the person is moving, what are the challenges, so you can inform yourself and prepare towards what is ahead of you. And also bearing in mind who is coming behind you to make it easier. We can't afford to be selfish if we really want to make the future female. We can't afford to be selfish. We need to sacrifice. We need to die a bit, little bit. We need to work harder. We need to aim. We need to get some scars to show so that the ones coming after us, the beauty of you, you, a female leader, is to ensure that those around you, those coming after you, will not go through the same thing, will not make the same mistakes, will not face the same challenges as you faced. Being the only one is not good enough. Leadership, especially female leadership, can be very lonely. And you need the tribe of women. Some ahead, some with you, some around you, and some behind you. All moving together to make sure that we achieve that purpose of making the world a better place for all male and female. A world of equality. I remain the woman with super crazy faith in God. I believe in God. God sees me as he sees any other person. We are all equal before God. But to achieve that and to keep that in mind, I need to apply the wisdom God has given us. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.